Uh, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to talk about some, some things to consider uh, when irrigating pasture in a water short year, but I, uh, many are things that we shouldn't ignore on years when we're not as concerned about water either. Um, so the first trick is when, when we talk about irrigating pasture and how much water pasture uh, uses and needs, Pasture's tricky because pasture isn't pasture. Right? It's not, everybody's pasture is different. Some are full of dandelions. Some have some alfalfa in them. The, the grass mix can be a whole lot of things. It could be chock full of Russian thistle. Um, so how much uh, water each of those plant communities really needs uh, is variable. And uh, some of that is just based on uh, what pasture um, mixes are appropriate for the location and, and some has to do with pasture maintenance. In general, we make estimates as engineers, we really like to make estimates and um, we've made some estimates that are, you know, roughly a lot of the state that's in the 5,000 foot to 6,000 foot elevation range. A lot of times pasture uh, needs about 20 inches uh, net uh, water a year. Uh, that's on top of precipitation. And after accounting for any losses in irrigation application. Uh, but we get to some parts of the state like, well, of course, down in... Uh, Southwest corner in Washington County, it, it can get uh, half again that much. Um, what's important to remember is that as the seasonal water use of pasture, um, which we might say the, the seasonal demand, if we were able to supply the water to the pasture, the, the general trend looks something like this graph that you're seeing right here. Uh, where the, the water use or evapotranspiration is the green line. Net, uh, if we, we take that net of precipitation, then we, we get that little black line. And so we see early in the season, um, no real need to irrigate. Uh, this is this is examples Castledale um, on just kind of an average year. And that's something to consider too, uh, is, is timing. If, if we're in a situation where there's water storage and we could wait to start irrigating until necessary, that can be beneficial. Uh, a lot of our pasture growing areas don't have that luxury. We, we take water when it's available. And so uh, of, of course, considering water supply is, is really important. When we're water short, uh, there, there's different strategies if we want to deficit irrigate pasture. This study was done by one of my predecessors, uh, Bob Hill and, and some others from Extension up in Randolph. And they were doing different water treatments and how they did it is they, they just took some hand line sprinklers and ran them in lines and um, you may or may not be aware of this, but if you run a, a hand line or a wheel line sprinkler and only run one set, it'll apply roughly a, a triangular pattern where the maximum applications right along the pipeline and it tapers uh, quite evenly generally uh, out to the sides. Um, that cancels out when we have multiple sets, those kind of triangles offset each other and, and we get a lot more uniform irrigation. Well, in research, we can take advantage of that. And that's what they did is they ran these hand lines and had the high application of irrigation in the center and low at the end or at the edges of where the sprinkler reach was. And I don't know, if, can you see when I move this mouse? Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I can't see like on my presenter mode, but I can see it on my other screen. So 
Um, and so we see that here. So every one of these locations got 12 irrigations, but the peak was in the middle. And so when we look at yield, we get a similar shape. Of course, there's an offset because we do have precipitation that's also contributing. And, and so we, in general, get uh, something like that also happening. So if you, if you were to, basically, if you were to take your irrigation water and just spread it out over the whole season, you're going to have some yield impact. More recent work um, by another one of my predecessors, uh, Neil Allen and, and some other folks here um, in, in Cache County and, and down in Garfield, they looked at, instead of just changing the amount of irrigation, but keeping it going all season, they looked at deficit irrigating by cutting back irrigation just at a certain time. So you can see at the bottom of this graph, they irrigated through June and then they just cut it off or irrigated through July or the full season, you know, roughly through September. Um, this is for Panguitch, this particular graph. And what we see here is that there's uh, not a lot of benefit, at least in the short term, of late season irrigation on a cool season grass. And most of our pastures in the state are cool season grasses, so, or are intended to be cool season grasses. So um, the idea is, in general, without other information, you'd be best to adequately irrigate early in the season and, and use up your water adequately irrigating early on rather than saving water for later in the year. Now, some species don't do well uh, after being prolonged, like prolonged stress every late summer, you're stressing them and then you, you start to decrease uh, stand quality um, sometimes. But that's some, some research. I wanted to give, uh, point you to some resources um, that can be helpful. So this is on irrigation.usu.edu. Um, if you were to go to that website and click tools, the second tool is an irrigation scheduler app. It's a web-based application that uh, colleagues at Washington State University uh, developed and that is has all of the weather stations that are uh, maintained by Utah State uh, University and the Climate Center on them. If you go on, you can set up a field, you can choose your location, your the weather station that you think is appropriate, your crop, uh, for example, grass, pasture, and they have a couple different options. And it's going to give you some real general estimates based on um, crop water use modeling on what irrigation scheduling would look like. You can enter in your irrigation amounts and see what the weather station had for rainfall. You can see what the soil, um, what, what your soil reservoir looks like is your available water in a fraction uh, percentage. And then how much water the model thinks that you could apply without over irrigating. And then ultimately there's some helpful graphs. I'm showing you this pretty quickly, but you can go on, pick a previous year because uh, this year hasn't happened yet. So pick a previous year and, and play around with it and see uh, what you can see. It makes some estimates um, on what it thinks yield loss is for different uh, deficit irrigation strategies you could play with. That's gonna be a really crude estimate, but it lets you play around with it. Um, some other just quick things to consider besides how much water is the condition, uh, one is the condition of the irrigation system itself. Are, are the sprinklers, say, I'll just talk to sprinklers right now, but um, if you got a wheel line or hand lines, when was the last time sprinkler heads were replaced or nozzles were replaced? Are they all the same head and nozzle? Are they an appropriately sized head and nozzle? And we have some links to tools that can help determine that. 
um, or feel free to reach out um, uh, to your uh, county extension representative or to myself. Um, but also, are we running at the at proper pressures? When we, un when we don't have uniform irrigation, uh, maybe because systems aren't maintained as well as they could be, for example, we're going to be under irrigating more of the field than we would want and over irrigating more of the field than we would want when we irrigate. We're never gonna get away from that because irrigation systems aren't perfectly uniform. We'll always have some under irrigation and some over irrigation. But those differences are magnified when systems are not well maintained or in some cases not well designed. Flow measurement, at keeping records of actual irrigation application and diversions is always helpful and becomes increasingly important in water short periods. And then another statement about uh, irrigation system maintenance. Uh, here's a really common site. Anybody that's seen a will line, anybody that's operated a will line has seen this. Leaky gaskets or leaky drains. Um, this one's not that bad. Uh, I don't have an exact number on this particular photo, but um, the systems that I took photos on that had where when I was doing this, they had like a gallon per minute of leak. That's not the best, but it could be a lot worse. Um, sometimes you've got more water coming out of a drain than out of the sprinkler right above it. And um, a colleague up in, uh, in Idaho uh, a little while back, they tested 30 systems, 30 wheel lines, and found on average across all of them, there was 14% excess water applied just through leaks and another 12% just through having nozzles that had worn out or in some cases were the wrong nozzle or uh, even they have like a photo of one miss, uh, a sprinkler head missing the nozzle altogether. So it's just blowing out of like a three eighths <laughs> pipe thread. So um, yeah, it's a pain, but maintaining systems um, is a good way to prevent excess water use. And, you know, with pressurized systems, that's, that's money. Almost all of our pressurized systems require pumping. And so it's money. Um, anyway, I went way over time, but hopefully that was helpful. And uh, thanks for your time.